I'm going to introduce you to the world of resonance. Now, to say I'm introducing you is kind of false. You all live with and experience the effects of resonance every day, all the time. You just may not have known them by that name. So what is this resonance? Well, resonance is the tendency of an object, any object, to vibrate naturally at certain frequencies. Now that sounds fancy, but basically what that means is if you put energy into something, that something might start to shake. And the way the object shakes is not random. The shake is also often very consistent. In fact, the shake depends on the object. What is the object's shape? What is its size? What is its mass? All of that determines how the object will shake. I know this sounds a little wild right now, but all sound you hear, all music you know, is from the effect of resonance. So what do we mean by that? Well, here's a simple instrument. Do you remember this? The recorder. Now let's say I cover up one hole in the back, two holes in the front, and I go and I, I play a note. Now, if I put that down and I come back later and I do the same thing, you expect the same note. Of course, in fact, no matter how many notes I play in a row, or if I hold it out, you expect the same note. And that's because when this object is held in this way, and energy is put into it by way of blowing on it, it shakes in a very certain way. The way it vibrates or shakes is what we call its resonance or its resonating. Because it shakes in a certain way, the air inside of this also is shaking in a certain way and it comes out as a certain sound. So a consistent note is evidence that something is shaking at a particular frequency. And we've talked about this frequency is just a fancy word for the note, if we're going to keep it simple. So a special note comes out, and that's based on the object and the air inside of it. If we change the object, we could. We change that resonant frequency or that note. Now, this is incredibly consistent. Take this pipe instrument. There are different ways to play this pipe instrument. But if we're to play this yellow pipe, which is of this length, in fact, I have the measurements, it's a 33 centimeter pipe. If we were to play this 33 centimeter pipe, actually, it will shake in a certain way. The air column inside of it will shake in a certain way, and it doesn't really matter how we play it. For example, if we... It's airy, but you hear a note. If we play it this way... That same note was there. It was spitty the second time versus airy the first time, but that same was in there. In fact, even if we tap this pipe, you still hear that. So no matter how, we seem to shake the column of air held within this particular pipe. It gives us the same note. And that's evidence that there's something unique about the column of air that fits inside this tube. It tells us that it likes to shake with a very particular frequency, giving off a very particular note. And what we say is that air column is resonating. It's resonating with a particular frequency. In fact, all of your instruments work this way. Imagine they didn't. Every time you picked up your guitar, you came here and you wanted to play a string. Imagine it played a different note every time. Well, it doesn't, and it can't, because this string of this thickness, this tension, this orientation here, connected at this length, always plays that note, whether I pluck it here, whether I go farther up, same thing. Heck, I wonder if we could take our violin bow and play it. I don't know if I can reach it. 
maybe. Oh, there it is. Don't worry, we'll pull a little viol viola in a minute. We'll see. Always plays that note. In fact, let's pull our viola. The viola is a nice example of this. So again, you can pluck a string. Which note is that? A. You can pluck the A string. Or... You can bow the A string. And it's the same note. That's because this string of this thickness and this length and this tension likes to shake with a particular frequency. What we say is you give it energy and it resonates at a particular frequency and the evidence is we hear the same note. Now, how is it you get different notes out of a viola? I mean, the four strings here. Well, if you notice, the strings are not of the same thickness. Some are heavier or more massive than others. So they don't shake the same. They are all the same length. They are pinched here and here. But they're not the same mass and they're not the same tension. You can adjust them up here by their tension. We'll see that in a little guitar. I'm not going to adjust this one. Because of that, each string has its own resonant frequency, its own mode of vibration that it likes to shake with. And when it shakes, you hear the note. However, can we change the length of a string? Sure we can. That's how you, why you pinch the string down. If you notice, originally... change a string's length, you have changed the way it likes to vibrate. So start to pick up the theme here. We can play around with the guitar a little more because this one is not actually carefully tuned. In fact, it's not tuned at all. Here, if we change the length of the string by pinching it down, we just made the string shorter. If you remember from our instruments, smaller objects play higher notes. Another adjustment we can make is actually the tension here. I'm making it more tense. Higher tension plays a higher note. And then if you notice on these strings, low mass over to high mass, the high mass string tends to play a lower note. And this is all we did with our instruments. So let's, let's get a picture of what's going on here. Let's, let's pull these instruments together so this all makes sense. You deliver energy to something by shaking it, by vibrating it. It doesn't vibrate in a random way. It vibrates in a very particular way. That particular way is called resonating. It gets, another way to say it is it gets loud for just that particular frequency and so as it does you know that the object is shaking in a very unique way now a second big step here is if you change the object you change the way it likes to shake that's really a big theme to this so every object has its own natural ways it likes to shake if you change the object you change those ways now for those of you who are a little more advanced with perhaps music theory you'll know that actually there are more resonant frequencies than just one for an object. An object can have one and then another and then another. Sometimes we call these overtones in music. When we do quantitative uh, resonance, we'll talk more about that. But for right now, know that each object has its own. Now, the crazy part is this. Everything does this. It's not just instruments. For example, Here is a subwoofer. Tip you forward a little so you get a full view of it. Subwoofer. This plays the low notes. Of course, you would use this to play music. However, we're not going to use it to play music right now. We're going to use it to generate tones. So here's an online tone generator. Let's see if you can see it a little better. There it is, an online tone generator. Just look up online tone generator. You want to have some fun and annoy the people in your house and freak out your animals. Hook one of these up to your speaker system. 
Anyway, what this thing does is it plays notes. So I'm going to hit play and you'll hear a note. Okay. Now. Now, this is not generally what people would qualify as music. This is just this speaker vibrating at a particular frequency. Right now, it actually tells me it's 48 hertz, which is clearly a very low note. However, I put my phone case on top so you could see that at certain frequencies, this box itself vibrates very violently. What we call that is a big amplitude. It is resonating. You will know an object is resonating when things around it start to really shake. You may have even experienced this in a car, particularly older cars. So watch, let's see when this phone case really starts to shake. when it's receiving a signal at 120 hertz. What that means is this tone generator is sending in a signal that's basically hitting it. The speaker is bopping back and forth 120 times per second. That happens to be a natural frequency for a wood box of this mass and this shape. And when that happens, it starts to rattle. And if you have a big system in your car, same thing. There are certain notes you'll play. There are certain notes in the music when the whole car, instead of you hearing music, you're going to hear Barrr! the windows shake, everything shakes. And I'll show you a little video clip, something like that. So to even take this one step further, the world of resonance is also often uh, intertwined with the world of sound, but it happens with more than just sound. You know, sound is really evidence that the object is mechanically vibrating. That's what it is. The resonance is happening first. The air, the guitar string, the speaker box, they're shaking violently, which then causes the air to shake violently, and then you hear the sound. This also happens with light. A little harder to demonstrate with light, but this is a radio. Hello Kitty radio. It's got an antenna. It's got stations. Let's see if I can show you that. Here we go. Right here. Little stations you can tune between. If you have an old radio, you might find one of these, a little pocket radio. It's got a tuning knob. Here it is. You wind this back and forth to find the station you're looking for. And so what's going on with this? Well, I'll turn the volume on. Inside this, there's a circuit, and it's actually called a resonant circuit. You are tuning to try to find a circuit configuration that resonates with the radio waves coming through the air. So this is a pretty cool thing. They're actually light waves. Radio waves are light waves sent out from radio stations around here, mostly from New York City. And those waves are not making our brains resonate. Sometimes people are worried they are. Sometimes they're worried our brains are getting heating from those radio waves, which would cause us health problems. That's something people really look into. As far as we know, it's not doing that. At least no one says it's doing that. And hopefully it's not. But... Those waves then just pass right by us. Our bodies are not resonating with them. But you can have a device that does. Boom, a radio. It's antenna. The length of the antenna matters. The material of the antenna matters. Can resonate 
with that radio wave. And inside, we turn this tuning knob. And, you know, on your radio at, um, in the car, you have a digital tuning knob. Press up and down. But it's the same thing. What you're doing is you are actually... It's like turning a tension knob on a guitar. You're turning it so that it finds... Maybe it's this note. If your radio is set to this note, it won't pick up the radio station. But if your radio is set to that note, it will pick it up. So inside your radio, there's a little circuit that you tune so that it resonates with the signal you're getting. And then boom, radio reception. Suddenly, you have an object that resonates with the light wave, the radio wave, and you get evidence of it. How? Speaker shake, it makes sound. So most of our evidence of resonance comes by way of sound. But the resonance itself is the object itself shaking. So, quick review and one, one last example hanging here behind me. Resonance is energy delivered to an object, and that object begins to shake violently. We call that big amplitude. What we've noticed is that this only happens when the energy is delivered at a certain rate or a certain frequency. You'll see as an example of pushing someone on a swing. If you push them at the right time, their swing gets higher and higher. We say the amplitude increases. If you push them at the wrong times, they'll go up a little bit, they'll still shake a little bit, but they don't have an increasing amplitude. They don't resonate. So here's a nice example. Here's a ball on a string. The cool thing about this is this thing shakes at a certain rate, so to speak, natural to it. Let me prove it to you. Here's a stopwatch. Okay, so what we're going to do with this stopwatch. We're going to take this ball on this string of this length. We're going to pull it back and we're going to press start. We're going to count 10 of them. Three, two, one, drop. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got about 14.43 seconds, and my measurement's not going to be perfect here. I'm doing my best with my hand. I'm doing ten of them. Hopefully, that will minimize the error. So 14.43 divided by ten, that's 1.443 seconds per swing. So about 1.44 seconds. Fine. We're going to take the same ball... Same string, same orientation. We're going to pull it back farther and let it swing. Let's see if this changes the time. Three, two, one, drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. With my rough hand estimate, 14.65 divided by 10, that's 1.465. So we got 1.443, 1.465. That's awfully close. So this thing, whether we pull it back a little or pull it back a lot, takes the same amount of time to swing back and forth. If we did this more carefully, we can get better results, but that's awfully close. That's pretty cool. That, by the way is why a grandfather clock is set at a certain length with that pendulum. Now, wait a minute, what am I talking about? Check this out. If we lengthen this string, have we changed the object? Yes. And so, let's try it again. Three, two, one, go. One. You can probably see it's different, too. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 18.06, divide that by 10, that's 1.806. So 1.44 around before, now we're talking about 1.8. That's a real difference. And so in fact, if we change the object, the way it naturally shakes will change. I'll just show it to you qualitatively here. If we make this thing real short, you will see, still in the video? Yeah, it is. You will see it swings very rapidly. One, two, three, four, five. So, the point of all this, every object 
has its own natural or resonant frequency. It depends on everything, the details about that object. Its size, its length, its weight, its tension, all of those things. If you change the object, you generally change its natural frequency or the way it likes to resonate. Resonating means it just vibrates strongly. In fact, this thing is great evidence. It doesn't really matter how I hit it. I could, could hit this thing a bunch of times, and you notice here, this is different than it was swinging before. But as soon as I let it go on its own, boom, right back into that natural pattern. Objects like to shape with a very natural pattern depending on the details of that object. That's called resonance. Our evidence of resonance is everywhere. We see things shaking in natural ways. The most frequent as we hear things singing or sounding in natural ways. And even we see evidence of light doing this as well. Go check out a few more examples. And as you walk about the world, this should be a new lens that you could put on your eyes. Everything. You hear kids pinging on little poles. You hear people walking in cars. And everything has natural resonant frequencies. And you see, hear, feel evidence of that all over the place. One last example I was just thinking of. Dr. Furman I was talking to, even the seismograph, what does it pick up? There are certain natural frequencies of the Earth's surface during earthquakes, and that's how those little devices can record what's happening when there's some sort of shake in the Earth. Everything shakes with natural frequencies. Resonance is everywhere. Now you can start to see it.